I've done a lot of traveling around the world, but in all my travels, I've rarely met famous people. But back in the day when I was at university, I did have occasion to visit with a rather eccentric person. His name was Buckminster Fuller. He died in 1983, sometime after I met him. And he was a, an inventor, uh, an architect, uh, a futurist, quite a, an unusual character. And he's probably most famous for popularizing the geodesic dome which uh, the U.S. Pavilion at Expo in Montreal and the Spaceship World at uh, the Epcot Center. So this uh, man had done quite a number of remarkable things, and I want to talk about that. But before I do that, I want to read two verses by the Old Testament prophets, and one of them is found in Ezekiel chapter 5 and verse 5, and it says, Thus says the Lord God, this is Jerusalem. I have set her in the midst of the nations and the countries all around her. And then another statement by Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 2. Behold, I will make Jerusalem, the King James says, a cup of trembling to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. Buckminster Fuller used this idea of triangles in various forms. He actually designed a geodesic house and he used it for a sort of a modern car, although that was a bit of a travesty. But he used this word dimaxion, which he had cobbled together from dynamic maximum tension, which was maximum a gain of advantage from minimal energy input. That was his little phrase. So he, he would try to find ways to maximize the use of something by minimizing it. So one of the things he had done was designing a world map which could then be folded into a rough sphere made of triangles. And it, it was designed in such a way that all the continents were linked together like one island surrounded by the sea. So if you can imagine on the map, Africa was kind of heading off in a north uh, westerly direction and then the body of it was Europe and Asia and then one foot of the man running would be Australasia going down to the island of Australia and the other foot running would be uh, North America with South America as the foot of that leg. So it looked like a man sort of running with these arms, if you will. And as I looked at that map, and he had various different projections of maps, and you can see them if you Google them. But this particular one, as I, as I looked at, he had come to lecture at our university. And I had gone to listen to the lecture. And as I looked at that map, what was interesting to me was the heart of this projection was right about the city of Jerusalem. So I had occasion to talk with Buckminster Fuller, and I asked him about this. Now, he was, a, he was a humanist, a Unitarian. He really had no time for a personal God. Uh, he said on one occasion, this was a, in one of the books he wrote in, in 1970, he said, I live on earth at present, and I don't know what I am. I know that I am not a category. I am not a thing, a noun. I seem to be a verb. <laughs> All right. Now, this is a really smart guy. He was, he was the head of the Mensa Association for quite a number of years. Very brilliant man, but he had no idea where he was in the universe. And why was that? Well, you have to have a starting point. What is your starting point? It can't be the edge of the universe. Nobody knows where that is. If your starting point isn't God, then we are all just floating in space. There's no way to measure anything. And when we have the Word of God, the Bible speaks about the metron, the measure of faith. In other words, the way we measure everything is by what God says about it and our belief of what God says about it. So here God says, Jerusalem, I have set her in the midst of the nations. Now, depending on the projection of the map, and he has all these different maps, um, 
It may not be that Jerusalem is set in the midst of the nations. But as we look at the map, we see that Africa hangs by a thread down to the southwest. Europe thrusts out to the northwest, and Asia is to the east. And here is Israel from a geopolitical point of view. It is at the crossroads of the ancient world. And uh, we would think by this time that a city like Jerusalem would be in the backwater of history. It's not on any great road system. It's not on any great river system. It's stuck on a little hill in, in this rather obscure area of the world. And yet, it's in the news every day. And it affects the, the politics of the world every day. And God says, I've put her as a cup of trembling. The word in the New King James is of drunkenness. In other words, it causes the nations to reel like drunken men. They're, they wonder what they should be doing. They're always off kilter, so to speak, because of the city of Jerusalem. Well, as I went up to the front and he had this map projection and I looked at it, I said to him, you know, it's kind of an interesting thing when I look at this, that the heart of your map actually is the city of Jerusalem. Oh, he said, just a coincidence. I said, well, I don't think it is a coincidence because the Word of God says that Jerusalem is the center. It's not only, if you will, the geographic or geopolitical center of the world. It's the glory center of the world. It's the only place where God took up habitation and lived in that little land and was crucified outside its gates. The only place to which he has promised to return to establish his kingdom and his glory shall cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. And of course, it's the salvation center of the world. It's the place where those hills were reddened with the blood of the Son of God when God's Lamb died for the sins of the world. And so Buckminster Fuller might think it was simply a coincidence, but it seemed to me as I look at that map, this ancient scripture from Ezekiel came to my mind. The Lord says, I have set Jerusalem in the midst of the nations. He put his finger on the map and he said, that's my city. He didn't do it with New York or Philadelphia or London or Paris or Istanbul. He did it with Jerusalem and he said, that's my city. And he put his name there in that very city. The Savior was taken out to die and they put his name in accusation over his head. But someday to Jerusalem, the whole world will come and his name will no longer be used in defamation, but in acclamation. And every knee will bow and every tongue confess, including Buckminster Fuller's. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father.